Well, I looked at G, and God, the nature of all the qualities and essence of God, was the Word, who already was in the beginning of time and creation. Hence, the Word is a mode of expression of God, the Son of God, just as God the Father is. In view are two persons of God. Just because of the definite article is not there. And the Word was God, and actually it's, and God was the Word. Where's the definite article before God? There is not one. Significant. In what case is it? Okay. The position of Teos God is the beginning of the third phrase, which makes it an emphatic one. Furthermore, it is without the definite article. There is no article which serves as a predicate nominative with the verb was to describe the word as having the essence of God. Everything that God is, is the word. Was the word. Was, I have to say, was because he's never, was un, non-existent. He's uncreated. He's eternal. Who's eternal? Only God. Yet, face to face, the word, face to face with God, and everything that God is, was the word. So, therefore, in view of the emphatic position of God at the beginning of John 1.1c, 1, 1, and the lack of a definite article in John 1.1c, 1, 1, pointing to it as the predicate nominative, which describes the subject, the whole logos, the word, we conclude that the qualities of God, everything that he is, his divine essence, which only God can possess, are indicated as qualities which are inherent in logos, the word. So logos in this phrase means that the word has the nature, qualities, and essence of the one and only eternal God, one and only, God is the Word. Hence, the Word is a mode of expression of God, the person of the Son of God, which will, the word Son of there is not there. We'll keep reading in John. We'll find out. Now, H. John 1, 1 to 3. The Word cannot be a God, oh, or be qualified by an adjective rendered divine, in the sense of being the divine Word, instead of all of what God is, is the Word. Now, I'm not all of the words I say. Thank goodness, because some of the words I'd like to take back. I don't want to be that, but I said them. So. Okay. And some maintain the word, word, in John 1, 1, C, must refer to God. So, that's me. I maintain that. But in the sense of being the divine word, as some maintain, I misread that, so I maintain that just to avoid the idea of what the words actually say. Be aware of these things. These little subtle things make a difference. You get rid of the subtleties in the beginning that are problematic, like being an airline pilot, right? If you're one degree off when you take off, you're not going to get to Russia. You're going to be somewhere out in the Pacific Ocean. I don't know where. Just one degree. One degree. One little thing. Teos, God, in the third clause of John 1.1. 1, 1, and God was the Word, is the predicate nominative case of the intransitive copulative verb was which it precedes, since there is no definite article with it. Then Teos defines the characteristics of Logos, and since there is no wording to imply a God, nor wording to imply the divine Word of God, as some maintain, then Teos does not refer to a God, nor the divine Word of God. You can nitpick on grammar, you get these people kind of like a knee-jerk, whoa, what? I never thought of that. Yes, go back to your New World Translation and see why it can't be that way. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God was the Word. Teos is a predicate nominative of was in the emphatic position at the beginning of the third clause without the definite article. The absence of the definite article, however, does not demand that Teos be interpreted a God with the indefinite article, as some suggest. You can't be an editor, just be an observer, a reader. Secondly, there is no article in front of Teos, God. The noun is said to be an authoress without an article. The verb was and to be is a copulative and an intransitive verb, and it joins two subjects together in meaning in this context and takes no object. There can be no direct object following was because intransitive copulative verbs do not take an object but take a predicate nominative, which refers back a meaning to the subject of the clause. And you say to this person, when you've repeated that to them, go back to a dictionary and find out what these things mean. You can find uh, equivalent uh, sentences that reflect upon something like this, but in a finite sense. And you say, in the same way, you can't change the meaning of grammar just because you don't like what the Bible says. Hence, John 1.1c 1, 1 joins the two subjects 
Theos and Logos in meaning, with the former being without an article, describes the quality of the latter. Hence, Logos, the word is described by everything that Theos, God, is. So contrary to the objections of some, the anothrous Theos rendered God in John 1.1c is in the predicate nominative case, which refers back in meaning to the subject, whole Logos, rendered the word. The rule of grammar is that where there is an intransitive verb, such as n, rendered was, it is the noun which is anothrous, without the article which is the predicate nominative, and the subject which is articular, and that which has a definite article, the word. On the other hand, if both of the nouns in a phrase with an intransitive verb have the article, consider that, but they don't. Or if both lack the article, consider that, but they don't. The two nouns become interchangeable. For example, if there had been an article in front of Theos, then John would have been telling us that God was the Word, as well as the Word was God. But there is no article in front of Theos, so author John is not teaching that the Word, Jesus Christ, and God, the Father, were the same person. Like I said, a lot of denominations harp on this and even maintain it. Hence, we avoid the heresy of modalism and a contradiction since the Word cannot be with God if both are one and the same. So right in the same verse, John 1, 1, A, B, and C would contradict one another and just burn your Bible and become a Buddhist or something. I don't know. Therefore, in view of the emphatic position of Theos, God, at the beginning of John 1, 1, C, and the lack of a definite article in John 1, 1, C, pointing to it as a predicate nominative which describes the subject, O Logos, the word, we conclude that the qualities of God, his divine essence, which only God can possess, are indicated as qualities which are inherent in Logos, the Word. So, Theos in this phrase means that the Word has the nature, qualities, and essence of the one and only God. God is the Word. So, to translate Theos in John 1 1 c as a God, as some individuals do, is both incorrect grammar and totally out of context. If the Word were properly conveyed as a certain God, using the Greek pronoun tis, which means a certain one, and it is not, it's not there, then this would contradict other passages which indicate that there is only one Jehovah God and no other gods besides that one God. Isaiah 43, 10-11 and Isaiah 45, 5. So you step on your own self if you're of that denomination that says he's a God because you say there's only one God and there's no other God besides me, a God or the God or anything. So what do you do? Well, you got to take Isaiah out of your book too. Destroy John 1.1, 1, 1, destroy Isaiah, and all 66 books go by the wayside. Furthermore, to translate the Greek noun teos in John 1.1c 1, 1, to force it to be an adjective rendered divine, as others contend, is also incorrect Greek. For the Greek teos, teos rendered divine, notice the difference in spelling, the I in the middle, and adjective, nor any of the other words like it that can be rendered divine are present. None of those words are present in John 1.1c. 1, 1, Can't editorialize. Compare Acts 17.29, 2 Peter 1.3. If this were the case, then the divine word would be portrayed as equal with God in John 1.1a, 1, 1, b, and, and John 1, 2 to 3 in the illogical impossibility. You don't have to go too far to find out. The Bible, if it doesn't contradict itself, is wondrously supernatural to me because this is complex stuff and you have to stay with it. Most All the other religious books, they step on themselves all over the place. For the divine word of God cannot logically be equal to God, nor creator of all things. Since only God is creator, and since the word is creator, then God is the word, then the word then can be no one else except God. Get that straight, then we go on to the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. Thirdly, earlier in the verse, the Apostle John used the definite article with the Greek word theon to refer to God the Father. John 1.14 so to use the definite article again to refer to the word would contradict John 1, 1, b, where the word is stipulated as with God, face to face with him, as directed and oriented toward one another on an equal level, separate and each in his own right. You have to be consistent, and this is supernaturally consistent. It's awesome. This would make it seem as if the word was identical to God the Father, one of the very points that John is disproving here. There are only three ways to write this third phrase, in Koine Greek, in John 1.1. 1, 1. Utilize the definite article with teos, so the word 
would be conveyed as the God. This would mean that there was no distinction between God the Father and the Word. And John did not use this construction. So much for modalism. Utilize the Greek word tis, meaning a certain, with theos to convey the word as a certain God. This would mean that the word was a lesser sort of divinity, as some denominations stipulate, not God on the level of the Father. John did not use this construction either. Don't put it in there. Finally, three, write theos without the definite article to be rendered God was the word. Put in that word order too. I don't know why the translations don't have that properly because it's emphatic. Everything that God is was the word. See, the emphasis to convey that the word had the characteristics of God and only God can have the characteristics of God. This is what John actually did write, thus fully and unambiguously attributing the essence of God to the Word. There's no vagary about the Trinity. It's there, the triune God. The two forms of the word God, teon, T-H-E-O-N, notice the different spelling, second clause, and teos, T-H-E-O-S, third clause, do not refer to different gods as some maintain. It's just the way you spell things in the Greek, depending upon where it is in the sentence but refer to the one and only Almighty God. They differ because of grammar, not definition. Neither refers to a God. You get a little particular there, a, a, a knowledge of this particulars, especially the, the critical Greek grammar that, that you need to know. You won't have people confusing you. So, in beginning was the word, and the word was with God. And ache and ho logos kai ho logos and poston teon. You don't have to learn to pronounce it. Sounds good to me. God in the second clause is in the accusative case. Second clause. With the definite article and is thus spelled T-H-E-O-N. Notice. It refers to the one and almighty and only almighty God. God in the third clause is in the predicate nominative case without an article and is called Theos. Spelled Theos. T-H-E-O-S. Its position at the beginning of the clause refers to the qualities of the one and only Almighty God. The spelling differences are due to grammatical rules of the Koine Greek language and not to a difference in meaning. We have idiosyncrasies like that in English. So don't rewrite the original first century Greek language. In John 1, 1 to 3, verse 2 reiterates the message of verse 1 for emphasis and leaves no doubt that the word is a person. The word is not a communication from God as some maintain. He is a person who already was at the beginning of time and creation, hence he himself is uncreated, pre-existent, eternal, and God. So, verse 2 reiterates this message of verse 1 for emphasis, and leaves no doubt that the word is a person who was at the beginning of time and creation, who himself is uncreated, pre-existent, eternal, and God. Notice that the Greek word, ohutos, rendered H-E, he, literally this one, is singular and refers to the context of John chapter 1 to a person. It's consistent. So the phrase, he was with God in the beginning, in verse 2, eliminates the possibility that the word is simply a communication from God. That's why there's repetition, because it's essential. If you don't get this from the very beginning, verse 1, you're not, and you don't repeat verse 2, you might keep on going. Here's verse 2 saying, by the way, by the way, this one was in the beginning with God. No communication from God would be described as he was with God in the beginning. The phrase in the beginning points all the more to the beginning of time and creation at which beginning he, the word, already was with face-to-face -face with God on an equal reciprocal basis with God. Just so you didn't get it. So you did get it in verse 1. I'm going to repeat it in verse 2. So the word is personified by the pronoun him, the agent of all creation, himself uncreated, preexistent, eternal, and God. Notice that's the way it's worded. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He, this one, person, was in the beginning with God. And then we go to verse 3. And all things came into being through him. And apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. Well, God... Uh, let's go to Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Elohim, that's the Hebrew for God. Well, here it says, the Word. Well, if there's only one God and he's creator, the Word and God are the one God, but different expressions as if persons. 
personality. So the first